So anytime I'm adding a new blade or another blade, different blade to my table saw, I'm super careful not to bump any of those teeth, especially in this case, I'm adding a 12 inch blade to a 10 inch table saw. This video is all about saw blades, circular saw blades, blades that you would use at the table saw or at the chop saw. Maybe you're cutting non-ferrous metal like aluminum or brass. I'll talk about blade types or tooth configuration and I'll show you my favorite blade and it might surprise you but hopefully this video will take out some of the mystery of which blade to use when and where. Let's get rolling, yeah? Hello Lima and here are a few tooth configurations. Excuse the crudeness of my drawings. This drawing shows the face of a single tooth and you'll notice that the widest part of that tooth will create the kerf or the width of the cut. And this particular tooth configuration is known as an FTG or a flat top grind. This drawing shows a TCG or a triple chip grind and behind it you can see a raker tooth which will look like an FTG or a flat top grind. Very popular configuration. Also you'll notice the RCA, that's radial clearance angle. That relief will reduce friction and heat. This is my favorite tooth configuration. This is what I use the most. The Forest brand Woodworker 2 utilizes this tooth configuration known as an ATB or an alternate top bevel. In other words, every other tooth is angled and those acute tips create a beautiful clean cut. And this grind known as a high ATB provides an even cleaner cut, but the trade-off is those super sharp points. Well, they just won't last as long, right? But for me, they are the ultimate when you need a superior cut. A couple of other things to note. This is a drawing of a blade as if you were looking at the edge of it. And the sides of the teeth on the faces of the blade, the teeth are angled back. And this is known as a tangential clearance angle. This also creates a little bit of relief, which reduces heat and friction. And looking at the face of a blade, hopefully this is a decent drawing. And I only drew one tooth, but you can see that hook angle in relation to the center of the blade or the bore. And then also that large area beneath each sawtooth is known as the gullet. This particular drawing would depict a rip blade, which would have a very positive hook angle and also a large gullet for clearance of large wood chips. And here are some proper drawings that I found on the web. Of course, this would be a negative rake. You can see how that tooth is slightly leaning back from zero to six degrees. This one is zero rake. In other words, a zero rake would have an imaginary line right through the bore and through the face or front of that tooth. And this is common for chop saw blades. And this one would be a positive rake. The more forward that it leans, the more aggressive that that tooth configuration would be for ripping wood, but you don't want to use a blade like that on a chop saw. A blade with high positive rake on a chop saw can be dangerous because as that blade cuts through the wood, it's going in an uphill travel and it can grab the piece of wood and pull it right off the base of the chop saw. So here's a blade on my small table saw. This is an FTG or a flat top grind. You can see that those teeth are just straight across one right after the other. I'm going to tilt this blade to make an angled groove. So here it is straight off the saw. I used several passes and changed the blade height to create this groove. You can just see a whisper of the path of that flat top grind. And so that would clean up with a small shoulder plane perfectly. And so now this dude should go in here. So this piece needs sanded a little bit to get that to fit right. But yeah, man, aim your QR reader at that. All right, so here's a blade designed for non-ferrous. It's actually a 12 inch. And you can see the arbor size is actually uh, a one inch arbor. But uh, with this adapter, you can get these adapters. This will accommodate the 5 eighths, I believe. Standard cabinet style table saws with the 5 eighths shaft. Anyway, non-ferrous. So let's see. 
So this is a triple chip grind, TCG. And you can see the configuration of the teeth there, right? And so it has a, a triple grind tooth and then the next tooth, I believe, yeah, the next alternating tooth is like a flat top grind. And so this is designed for non-ferrous metals, lead, copper, aluminum, gold. <laughs> and so let me grab a straight edge. And so from the center of, uh, of this blade, you can see if I bring an axis out, it's probably hard to see on camera, but these teeth, the face of this te tooth or these teeth is actually back and that's called negative. It's a negative uh, rake, okay? And so with that type of configuration, it won't catch that aluminum as it's going through. It makes for a cleaner cut. It's uh, not as aggressive compared to, say, a rip blade. Let me grab one of those. So you can see the massive difference. If I bring this toward one of these teeth, you can see how much that tooth configuration is leaning forward. So this is a very positive angle. And of course, from the center to the face of that tooth, if it was in line, that would be a, a neutral or zero hook. This one's actually a negative hook. Made for non-ferrous metals. Makes sense, yeah? So these two ramps did not come with a hook and they don't actually fit on this trailer, but I use, I like the ramps because they're longer than the ones that the trailer came with. So I thought I would make accommodations for that. Let me show you what I did. All right, so this blade here is not designed for aluminum, but it's getting dull and it's a fine tooth blade. I thought I would give it a try. Let's see how it did. And since this blade is not designed for a chop saw, you'll notice that I held the handle down on the chop saw until the blade stopped spinning. That looks pretty good. All right, after installing a blade for non-ferrous metal at the table saw, I made sure I had a push block with an eighth inch or less hook to be able to push those pieces through. And in hindsight, I should have used a zero clearance. You can see that small piece of aluminum fall off going down inside the cabinet saw, but didn't hurt anything. Several carriage bolts with nuts and Loctite. Boom, that's gonna work well, yeah? And so here is some more aluminum that I'm having to cut. And this is pretty substantial. I believe this was half inch thick. Like aluminum plate. Well, bar stock, I guess you'd call it. So it's probably half inch thick and two inch wide. I just cut a chunk so I didn't need to rip the entire section that I had. And with a proper blade, it cuts really well. I lubricate with... WD-40. I didn't show it, but uh, I've, I have another video on cutting non-ferrous metals. I explain all that. A little bit of WD-40 will really make a dramatic difference. And I'm just using a scrap of plywood, looks like, just to test the cut as far as the width, because the width of these pieces was critical. And always use a push block of whatever type you like. This is the type I like. It holds the material down firmly and the hook at the end pushes it through nice and safe. Must have had a little bit of a burr, so I just deburred with a file. And of course, I am wearing hearing protection and safety glasses. A face shield would actually be better in this situation, which is why at times I'll kind of hold up my hand just to block any of that shrapnel. It's really not that bad. It looks worse than it is. From there, I can go over to the chop saw. I brought the blade with me, added that, added a little bit of WD-40, a little block of wood to hold that where my fingers are far enough away from the blade to stay safe. And check that out. Clean, beautiful, awesome cuts. Routinely, I will use a combination blade to slightly cut a kerf in cardboard to make custom sized boxes. It's quick, easy to lay out, easier than a razor knife, and the boxes come out beautiful and professional. Yeah man, just like that.
This is a blade storage cabinet that, well, I never finished about a couple of years ago. It'll be on wheels and it'll have 22 drawers that will hold either a 10 inch or a 12 inch blade. There will be a hole underneath that you can lift, put your finger through to lift out the blades easily. But you know how it is, got sidetracked and just never finished. Too often I see people taking saw blades and setting them down on their cast iron table. And many times it's even careless where they're like literally just, you know, throwing it down. <laughs> well, you gotta understand that this is carbide. The, t the teeth are carbide, right? Carbide is hard and very brittle and very vulnerable to being chipped. So this acute geometry of these teeth they have these really sharp corners and just a slight, even, even putting the blade in the, the cavity here to install it, if you bump it on, on part of this cast iron table, you can chip one of those teeth. You might not even be aware of it. It might not even show up, but under magnification, you would definitely see it. So just something to be aware of. You know, once you pull this stuff off, it's not protected anymore. Just be mindful of that, yeah? Here's one way to tighten a blade, very easy. Boom, that's it. I like this type of a wrench, not for the leverage, this could actually be shorter, but uh, this is much more substantial, it's a lot wider. The ones that they send are, well, they're pretty weak and they can even get, you know, between the nut and the washer because they're so thin. So I think here you can see how sometimes this factory wrench kind of gets caught between the, the nut and the washer unless you're right on the hexagon part of the nut. But no worries with this dude. Now this really only applies to the unisaw or those types of cabinet saws. The saw stop seems to have substantial wrenches. So an easy way to remove the blade, something I've always done, is I raise it and I just put the wrench on there. And um, again, watch the wrench on the teeth. Put the wrench on there and then I'm just palming this like a disc brake. I can just squeeze that, pull the wrench toward me, boom, released. Super easy. I mean, you can use a block of wood, I guess, but uh, lots of ways to do things. I'm getting ready to change my saw blade on my chop saw, and this has been on there for quite a while. It has been fantastic. It is an alternate, um, an ATB, alternate top bevel. And looks like, I don't know how many teeth that thing has. 80 maybe? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13? That's weird. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 13, six times threes, so uh, 78 tooth. <laughs> That's weird, it's usually 80. But anyway, this is a really good blade and I'm not sure what the, uh, what the angle is. Let me see. Compared, it's about a zero hook. So in other words, those teeth I put an imaginary axis right through the center of this bore. That's in line with that. I'd say that's a, uh, a zero, zero hook. Anyway, this is what I'm gonna put on there now. This is a Leaps. This is a 80 tooth, 12 inch, 0.125. So eighth inch by one inch bore, 80 tooth, ATB, also an alternate top bevel, but this one, Probably won't last as long, but it'll probably cut even better, at least initially, because this one, and I'm gonna zoom in on this here in a minute, but uh, this is a negative hook. In other words, with that imaginary axis going through the bore here, going across the carbide face, they, the teeth are leaning back slightly. So probably a couple of degrees. Negative hook, it doesn't say, but there is a two there, so maybe a two degree negative hook. I don't know. 
anyway, yeah, you're next. Here I have a line drawn, that bottom line, as a radius from the center of the blade, and that top line represents that angle or that negative hook of this particular blade. All right, I'll show you a few of my blades. So these, one, two, three, four, five, these six, actually, and the one that's on the slider, these are all for my slider because they have this special pin for the electric brake, right? And I have uh, a few 10 inch and then some 12 inch. And the reason I have this many is because, well, I like saw blades, but I find them on sale. Um, this is a really good blade, and so I wrote down that I liked it, and I got two more when they went on sale. Every once in a while, you'll see them for sale on on uh, Amazon. You can pick up a good blade like this for like 30 or 40 bucks. Totally worth it just to buy it, even if you don't think you need it, because at some point, you will, right? Here's some more 12-inch. These are the ones I use on my 12-inch chop saw. This is probably one of my favorite. It's an inexpensive blade. It's a Diablo. And I have both 80-tooth and 96-tooth. I actually prefer this 80-tooth. They cut really well. And I, had sh I think I had showed you this, but these have very little um, rake or even zero. I don't know if this one shows. It's still in the package. See, wish they would write that on there. But as I'm looking at the teeth in relation to the arbor, it looks like about a zero, zero hook. So yeah, something to keep in mind, more teeth, yes, better cut the trade-off. Well, it can clog or get dirty quicker, which means it'll dull faster, right? I have three combo blades, 10 inch, just pretty generic. Uh, these look like an, an AGE made by a Manitool. Decent blade, I don't use a combo blade very often and I'll show you what is my most used blade here in a little bit uh, this is a really good blade it has a slight negative negative hook so this is gonna make really clean cuts in plywood melamine and this one's still fresh so if I use a blade that you know I remove this material or it's brand new or whatever and I use it a couple of times just to keep track I write something on it so I'll know um, anyway uh, some more 12 inch blades. I got Elites, different brands, Systematic. This one's really heavy, big, heavy duty blade. One of my favorites, this is a Forest, one of these Duraline high AT blades. And these are freaking excellent. They have a really high ATB grind. So they're gonna make a really awesome clean cut. I save this for special cuts where I need a really clean cut and can't go wrong with Forest. I have another one here this is a forest. This is actually for solid surface. Don't remember where I got this or I haven't used this in a long time. It would probably work as a rip blade, although it doesn't have the cut on the teeth for a rip blade. It's for solid surface like Corian, those man-made materials. But anyway, probably a good blade. All right, moving on to the next pile. We've got some scoring blades. These are my specialty blades that I cut dovetails with. So I have a flat top grind 10 inch blade. Um, don't even know the brand, but they're specific for, for cutting dovetails. There's the eight, eight degree right hand. All the teeth are leaning one way, or not leaning, but are ground, you know, eight degrees one way. This is another one of those blades I've been hanging on to for a long time because they cut so well. It's really toward the end of its life. You can see it's been sharpened numerous times, has very little carbide left, but this is another one of these uh, Duraline high ATB grind. And also Forest, speaking of Forest, this is my favorite blade. This is what I use almost exclusively on um, my 10 inch table saw. As a matter of fact, there's another one on there now, but it's a, the Woodworker 2. Really awesome blade all around. I mean, you can, it's, they're designed, it's actually a rip blade, right? But you can make super clean cuts in plywood, melamine, awesome blade. These are uh, a 40 tooth. So yeah, this is my go-to blade for just about anything, unless I'm cutting particle board or MDF. Here's another blade um, that's a woodworker too, but a, a 12 inch. And this one is dull. Don't know, I don't remember where I got that. 
might have got that at a yard sale or something like that you know what i mean but love forest blades pricey totally worth it in my opinion this last little pile um well these are these are just the blades that come with your chop saw i use those if i have you know cement encrusted two by fours if i'm gonna hit a nail i don't care those are disposable those won't ever get resharpened those are just kind of my trash blades these two blades are for non-ferrous metals a couple of different brands but they both work really well they have a very negative hook you can see how the teeth are laid back for aluminum brass copper gold non-ferrous metals and of course these have the one inch arbor you just need this little adapter to run it on a 5 8 shaft so i use both of these on my chop saw for cutting metal uh, non-ferrous metals or i can put these on my 10 inch table saw with one of these dudes a few other things i'd like to mention about blades one of them is value if you use inexpensive blades you are not getting the value that you should because most of those blades can't be resharpened you might send one off to a blade sharpening facility and they're going to refuse it because the carbide is inferior not all quality not all carbide is created equally so he might not want to do it uh, the carbide is probably going to be too small to be resharpened. They're not designed to be resharpened by a good quality blade. And they're going to cost maybe three or four times the, the amount. But you can get them sharpened 10, 12 times. So that value is certainly there with high quality blades, right? Uh, another thing to consider is keeping your blades clean. If you clean your blades, you're going to be able to use them longer between sharpenings. So that makes sense. I don't use pine much, but I know pine is notorious for a lot of, you'll get a lot of sap or pitch buildup. And even if you're not cutting pine, those teeth need to be kept clean. There's a lot of good quality blade cleaners out there on the market, check those out. And lastly, thin kerf blades, I am not a big fan of. I know they have their place. They will certainly utilize less power on say a job site, job site uh, table saw for instance. So they have their place, but when I've used them, I notice a lot of deflection because of that thinner kerf, especially if they are being, you know, taxed and they get a little bit overused, they can heat up from the friction and that blade will literally start to warp or flutter. So I stay away from them. Anyway, hope that helps. And there you have it. Thanks a ton for watching. Let me know in the comments what other videos or types of videos you'd like to see. And remember, click, like, subscribe, learn.